Welcome back to Art, Architecture, and the Politics of Grandeur in the Age of Louis XIV. This is part four. So here we are back in the Hall of Mirrors, and there were three occasions when Louis forced visitors to Versailles to walk the entire 240 foot length of the Hall of Mirrors forward and backwards, as we were talking about earlier. One of these was when the Doge of Genoa came calling to beg Louis' forgiveness. Uh, Doge was sort of an elected lord. Venice had one as well to, uh, as rulers. Uh, in this case, Genoa had sold some ships to Spain, France's enemy, and on another occasion did not allow French troops to cross their soil. Uh, so in order to get even with the Doge of Genoa, Louis started bombing Genoa relentlessly. The Doge was simply not allowed to leave the city. That was just the way it was. Uh, and when told this, Louis just resumed the bombing, and then the Doge was forced to come and pay his tribute to Louis in person and walk the entire length of the hall, as I said before. This is a description from the Versailles website of that occasion. There were, by the way, two other occasions when ambassadors from Siam and Persia were also forced to walk the entire length of the hall. So from the Versailles site, he, meaning the Doge, attended the king's getting up ceremony. This was called the levee, and this was another mark of rank. It was a great privilege to help Louis get up in the morning. Uh, and on the 23rd of May, took his leave on the 26th. On his departure, Louis XIV presented him with a box covered with magnificent portraits, along with Gobelin tapestries. The four senators also received Gobelin tapestries, although much less beautiful ones than the ones for the Doge, accompanied by a portrait of the king adorned with diamonds. Isn't that touching? Or ostentation had become a flip of page. Ostentation had become a political and diplomatic tool. The reception sent major waves rippling across Europe. France was the rising power to beat. But a new war was brewing, the War of the League of, League of Augsburg, which would lead to the melting down of those silver furnishings. So this is when those silver furnishings eventually disappeared, was when France got involved in just one too many wars. The Nine Years' War, which lasted from 1688 to 1697, and the War of Spanish Succession, which lasted from 1701 to 1714, both very long wars, uh, drained the treasury. And as a reflection of the times, men's wear became much more somber. You see Louis is here dressed completely in brown. This is a painting to indicate the succession to the French throne. It was painted anonymously. We have no idea who the artist was. Uh, but it could have been anywhere from 15 years before Louis died till maybe even posthumously. The two portrait busts that are up against the wall are Louis's father, Louis XIII, and Louis's grandfather, Henry V. On Louis XIV's right, you see his son Louis, the Grand Dauphin, the prince essentially, and grandfather to Louis XV. On Louis XIV's left, you see the Grand Dauphin's son Louis, uh, the Duke of Burgundy, and father to Louis XV. Uh, Louis XIV is gesturing toward the five-year-old uh, Louis XV, the heir of the French throne. Both uh, Louis XIV's son and his grandson had died in a measles epidemic, the first in 1711 and the second in 1712. Without a vaccine, measles was a deadly disease. So that uh, date of their deaths indicate that this painting was done after 1712, but it is to show clearly the ancestry of the entire family and the fact that Louis XV at five years old is going to be the next King of France. Did you ever get the feeling you were being watched? The only woman in the painting, the only person not named Louis is Madame de Ventadour. She was a duchess and she was also Louis XV's governess. Uh, the painting may have been a gift to this woman because uh, she prevented doctors from bleeding the little Duke of Anjou and may therefore have saved the entire dynasty single-handedly. Post Louis XIV, the Hall of Mirrors has been where several important treaties have been signed. For example, about a hundred years later, uh, the Treaty of Paris would acknowledge America's independence from Britain. Ironically, within a few years, France would be involved in its own revolution and the monarchy would be overthrown. 
Uh, the mural in the center of the slide was by Charles Lebrun. It's on the ceiling of the Hall of Mirrors, and it shows uh, France invading Germany. This mural would figure into a couple of trees that were signed later in the Hall of Mirrors as well. Uh, in 1871, the Franco-Prussian War ended. Uh, France accepted defeat at the hands of Germany, and Prime Minister Otto von Bismarck very conspicuously chose the Hall of Mirrors to have the treaty signed in, uh, and led by Bismarck, Kaiser Wilhelm I was declared Emperor of Germany. In 1919, uh, the Treaty of Versailles ended World War I, and French Prime Minister Georges Clemenceau very conspicuously chose the Hall of Mirrors uh, so that Germany could accept uh, defeat at the hands of the French. Here I am down the end of the hall. And so ends our lecture. Thank you for joining me. Hope to see you again. And here we have a list of some of the references I used to inform this lecture, as well as the intro and outro music that I used by Peter Shickley, aka PDQ Bach. Once again, my book, The Art of Looking at Art, Your Guide to Everything Having to Do with Art, my contact information, my website, and a list of my upcoming classes.